Welcome back to the second part of our session this morning, Spiritual Ministry. I'm having an absolute great time with you guys. Just remind you, I know our backdrop is different. I am on the road. I am getting ready to preach tonight, the day that I am uh, uploading these videos or recording these teachings. I am in a, another city in Exeter, California at Sir Demian's Church, and I will be preaching in just a few hours. So this will be uh, my third session. Tonight will be my fourth session of the day, uh, plus um, uh, the travel time. And so I am, I am uh, joyfully uh, exhausted, and uh, that is a thing. Uh, we can be very excited to do the work of God and things of God, but uh, it can uh, be very, very... Uh, uh, tiring at times, but uh, what a blessing, what an honor, what a privilege that it is to be called into the work of God. What an incredible honor it is to serve in the kingdom of God. So over the last few lessons, we have talked about the transition uh, from prayer into faith and praying the prayer of faith. And so remember our lessons on, and I don't want us to get very scattered uh, because uh, if we're not careful, it can become or feel that way. And and it's really not. We've gone through a season or a session of prayer lessons where we built the foundation of our spiritual ministry because we understand that we cannot have spiritual ministry without first having a prayer life. It just cannot happen. Uh, it is impossible. Uh, you cannot have a spiritual ministry without a prayer life. Uh, if, you, if you do things in the Spirit without prayer, without knowing the Spirit, uh, being connected to the Spirit, you will end in uh, results that may happen for someone else, but you will be lost yourself. And I don't want to be that way. I don't want to preach the gospel. Woe is to, unto me if I preach the gospel and I myself become a castaway. I do not want that to happen. So we have gone through, uh, just to make sure that we're all on the same page, we have processed through uh, lessons on foundation of spiritual ministry. Then we process through lessons on prayer for spiritual ministry and now we have transitioned out of the book of Jude where it talked about our most holy faith it talked about praying and so we're transitioning uh, from prayer into faith because if we're going to conduct spiritual ministry it has to be done in prayer that connects us to God and faith then releases the power of God through us. You might want to write that down. Prayer connects us to God, but it is faith that then uh, releases the power of God through us. And that is exactly what God is trying to do, wanting to do in our lives. He is wanting to uh, flow through us. He is wanting to release his power through us that we can be mightily used of God. And I believe that. I'm not just talking about talent. I'm talking about mightily used of God, not with enticing words of men's wisdom, but with power and demonstration of the Holy Ghost. I want that. I know you want that. And so we went through prayer. We went through and, and, and began the journey in faith. And so we talked about the defined faith. It's our trust in God and it's our conviction, our truest conviction in the things of God. And then we moved into uh, dimensions or, or, or levels, if you will, of faith. And that last level is where we have begun to teach about in the first hour and then again in the second hour where it talked about Abraham had strong faith. And so I want to have, I know we all have the measure of faith, and I want us to have active faith, great faith, because remember there were times the disciples had no faith, but we know no is impossible when you all have the measure. So no means inactive faith. You know, you got to use your faith. And so then great faith was active faith. I'll show you my works by my faith or my faith by my works. It's active. It works. The word work there is a verb in the English language. It means to do. It means to work. It's like uh, putting your hand to the plow and not looking back. It's, uh, it, it's work. And ministry is doing the work of God. And you can only do the work of God through prayer and 
faith. And so the last dimension and what we started laying the foundation for uh, in our last hour was that I want strong faith. We know that that strong faith, Abraham, he, he was fully persuaded. He did not stagger, even though it took years for the promise to come to pass. He didn't stagger. That's strong faith. And so strong faith allows seasons of development in our lives. And so spiritual ministry, if we want to be, I'm still developing in spiritual ministry. I don't have all the answers and there's dimensions in the spirit that I've not yet gone to that I'm hungry for. And so we're laying a foundation, working our way through prayer uh, and through faith. And we don't move away from prayer. We don't move away from faith, but we add to our lives prayer and we add to our lives faith and that's what God is trying to do so we talked about strong faith strong faith understands this in order to have strong faith we as Paul told the Corinthian church in 2 Corinthians 5 and 7 for we walk by faith not by sight and we understand that because if Abraham had walked by sight he would have staggered because what he saw was different than what he heard. He heard the word of the Lord say, I'm going to bless you. I'm going to give you a child. I'm going to give you a son. You're going to have this. And he went years and decades without having it. What he saw was nothing. What he heard was, I'm going to give you a promise. And, and, and that promise is going to be more than, than the stars of the sky and more than the sand of the seashore. I'm going to give you that promise. But when Abraham looked around, he didn't see it. He could not see it because it wasn't there. It even got to the point that, that Sarah laughed at the fact when the angels come and declared what would happen. And, and, uh, and, and that's where we get the text where it says, is there anything too hard for God? And that, that is the question. Is there any? No, there is nothing that is too hard for our God. And so he did not stagger. So there comes a point, and let's, let's be very clear here. There comes a point that Abraham said, I heard God give me a promise, but what I see is nothing happening. However, if I have strong faith, enduring faith, then I am going to be carried to that next place, that next dimension. And when I get into that place, I will, in the fullness of time, see what God has promised that he would do in my life. If God said you're going to be powerful in ministry, don't give up. You're going to be powerful. If God promised you things, uh, and, and uh, you can ask Joseph, sometimes it's not good to tell everybody everything God promised you. But, but there comes a moment that what God said, God will perform. What God said he would do, God will complete. And that is where we're picking up our lesson in part two today, is that we need to figure out, we need to know what to do when what we see seems different than what we've heard. As an evangelist, I have uh, preached for many years, and I have been uh, honored and privileged to preach in places where I would see people get the Holy Ghost. They would repent. They'd be baptized in his name. They would be filled with the Spirit. And when they were filled with his Spirit, they would be on fire for God. They would be winning souls. They would be doing outreach. They would be on evangelism. And they, they're out bringing people to, to the house of God. Their friends, their family are coming in getting the Holy Ghost. And when the music starts, they're on their feet and praising God. They're new converts. They're excited. I mean, everything is exciting and new. You know exactly what I'm talking about. When those new people come in, get the Holy Ghost, man, they love to worship and they love all that. But I've also been evangelizing long enough that I have seen people, when I, when I would go back to preach at that church again, maybe a year, maybe two years, maybe longer, I would go back to preach in that church and I would ask the pastor, where is so-and-so? Where is the person? You know, they prayed through during the last revival when I was here and they were on fire for God. Where are they now? And the pastor uh, so many times would tell me, oh, uh, sir, or oh, Brother Gillum, uh, when, uh, you know, uh, they were doing so good uh, and God was really touching their lives. But then 
something came up and something happened and and uh, you know they began to miss church and something began to happen and it seemed like it got worse and worse and then all of a sudden they no longer came to church and they hadn't been living for God now they're backslid for a long time and I, it just breaks my heart because none of us ever get discouraged over the promises of God. I've never met anybody that was that way. Uh, I, I've never met anybody that could be praying and God speak a word of promise to them and them go, oh God, I don't want your promises. Oh, I'm so mad at you, God. I'm mad, God, because you promised me something and, and I... I you know, God, I, I just, I'm, I'm upset that you told me you would bless me. No, we don't meet anybody like that. Those, those, those would, those, those would be different kind of people. Nobody gets upset at the promises of God. And then, on, on, so if you could look in, the, you could put the promise of God right here. You could draw a little line on a piece of paper. You could say the promises of God. That's when God speaks the word into your ears. You hear it in your spirit. God says, I'm going to bless you. I'm going to give you this. I'm going to anoint you. I'm going to break every chain. I'm going to do this, this, and this. I'm going to give you your family. You're going to do great work. But God does it here. Nobody gets upset. Nobody staggers. Nobody gets frustrated here. And then over here on this side, you can draw it on a little piece of paper. This side is the promise where you heard it. This side right here is the fulfillment of it where God does when you see with your eyes what you heard with your ears. That is spiritual ministry. You begin to see the results with your eyes of the thing that God spoke into your spirit. But there's, there's this, remember, here's the promise and here's the fulfillment. There's this thing in here called time. There's this thing in here that, that, you, that we have to go through. People get frustrated and give up on God. They give up on the church and they give up on ministry when they are in this between place right here because there's frustration when you're in the between place. There's frustration when you're going through it. The children of Israel, the Bible tells me. Now, th th this is powerful. I want you to think about this with me because God spoke to, to, to Abram and told him, you get out of the land and you go to a land. And when you get to the land uh, that I show you, you'll know. Abram, where, where do I go? Oh, you'll know it when you get there. Just get up and follow me and go. So from the beginning over here, that promise, uh, you on, on this side of the, the, the word promise, where you hear the promise, you can write underneath it Abram. You can write underneath it Sarai. You can write underneath it Lot because they were told to go. They were told, you go and I'll give you, remember the fulfillment of the promise on this side, you can write land, your own land. You can write underneath that Canaan land. So on this side, you've got God said, Abram, you go. I'll show you a land. I'll give you a land, right? Abram and Sarah. Or you can just write Abram, whatever you want to do. But on this side is the fulfillment of it, and here's where you get the land. Now, in between here, uh, there he Abram is leaving, and it's taken long enough that his name becomes Abraham. It's taken long enough that all of a sudden they go down into Egypt. It takes long enough that Moses comes and they, by the hand of God delivers them from Egypt. And, and, it, and it goes long enough. You could make, okay, you got... This is the word that we hear. God will give us a land. This is the fulfillment of the land. You can write Canaan land underneath it, whatever. And, and in the middle, you've got these years of following God. You've got Abram becoming Abraham. You got all the way to, to going down where the word of the Lord said, don't be afraid to go down into Egypt because I will go with thee and I will bring you out of Egypt. All the way through those scriptures, you find God reminding them, whomever, whether it, you can write underneath it a timeline right here. You can write under one Abram, write another one Abraham, write another Moses, uh, Egypt, uh, come out of Egypt. All of these things are, are, are coming to a point that God is going to fulfill what he said. However, now we've got generations. Even in Egypt, we know that they were there some 400 to 430 years, and they kept hearing, you're going to get your own land. You're going to get your own land. That's what they heard. You're going to have your own place. You're going to have the promised land. They heard you're going to have the land, but, they, but what they saw 
was different than what they heard. They kept hearing, you're going to have it. But they kept seeing, no land, keep walking. No land, go to Egypt. No land, you're a slave. It's the whip on the back. It's them learning to build these cities for Pharaoh, for Ramses and Pythes. They're building these cities uh, for Pharaoh. And, and while they're building these cities, they're still hearing with their ears about the land, but they have not seen with their eyes. This is proof that Paul is trying to get the Corinthians to understand. That's why we don't walk by sight, because there are times that what we see does not look the same as what we hear. There are times that what we see, matter of fact, looks like it's in direct conflict with what we have heard. And so it is that God is trying to show us we are going to have to make up our mind that we are not going to walk by sight because there are days that it will not look good. There will be days that it looks like that it's getting worse. However, if we can go back and remember the promises of God, there came a moment that they were going to get the land. Now, watch this. This is very powerful. Exodus chapter number 23. Exodus 23 this is a word God's given to Moses and to the children of Israel about the promised land. They've been hearing about, you're going to have this land for generations. Now, Exodus 23 says, and verse 27, I will send my fear before thee. It's talking about the inhabitants of that promised land. I will send my fear before thee, and I will destroy all the people to whom thou shalt come, and I will make all thine enemies turn their backs unto thee, and I will send hornets, whoo, I will send hornets before thee, which shall drive out the Hivite and the Canaanite and the Hittite from before thee. That's God speaking. God tells Israel, I am going to, I'm going to run them out. I'm going to send my fear into that land and the, the Hittite and the Canaanite and the Havite. I'm going to drive them out of the land. And he said, I'm going to send hornets even uh, that are going to fly through. And they're going to, when they fly through, the enemy will fly out. Uh, and, and man, Israel hears it. Oh, yes, it's a renewed promise from God. Uh, I'm going to drive out the enemy. I'm going to send my fear. I'm going to chase the enemy out. That's what they heard. Now, that's Exodus 23. What they heard was God was going to drive the enemy out. Now, let's connect this. I want to know if what they saw is what they heard. Let me see. Numbers chapter 13. Numbers 13 verse 25. And they returned from searching of the land after 40 days. These are the spies that Moses sent out to, uh, to spy out the land in Numbers uh, chapter number 12 and Numbers 13. And then you find the end of the story uh, or around Numbers chapter 14 and how all of these things come to pass. So they go into the land and now they are looking. They heard with their ears in Exodus 23, 27, and 28 that God would drive out the inhabitants of the land. But when the spies went in, Numbers 13, 25, now this is what they saw. Exodus 23 is what they heard. Numbers 13 will be what they hear or what they see, rather. And they returned from searching of the land after 40 days. And they went and came to Moses and to Aaron and to all the congregation of the children of Israel unto the wilderness of Pharaoh and Kadesh. And they brought back word unto them and said unto all the congregation and showed them, they saw, showed them uh, the fruit of the land. And they told them and said, we came unto the land, whether thou sendest us and surely it floweth with milk and honey, the provisions of God. It's flowing with milk and honey, and this is the fruit of it. Nevertheless, the people be strong that dwell in the land, and the cities are walled and very great. And moreover, the 
the, we saw the children of Anak there. Those are the giants. Uh, now, the Amalekites dwell in the land of the south, and the Hittites and the Debusites and the Amorites dwell in the mountains, and the Canaanites dwell by the sea and by the coast of Jordan. Verse 30 said, And Caleb stilled the people before Moses and said, Let us go up at once and possess it, for we are well able to overcome it. But the men that went up with him said, We be not able to go up against the people, for they are stronger than we. Wait a minute, wait a minute. You just heard in Exodus that God said, I'm going to drive the people out. I'm going to drive them out. I'm going to send hornets. So they heard that God was going to do it. They, they, they heard it. But when they got to the land, what they saw when they spied out the land was different than what they heard. They did not see hornets. They did not see uh, the enemy running out the other side. They saw the promised land, but what they saw at the moment, because remember, it wasn't that God did not do what God said. It was that it was not time yet. Uh, they were just spying the land. Uh, if they would have rose up and said, you know what? God said uh, he was going to drive those enemies out. God said he was going to do that. Uh, if they had risen up and said that, that, then God would have fulfilled his word. I believe that. But they looked at, they got distracted. They got frustrated. They got confused because what they saw in the moment was different. It seemed like it was in a conflict against what they heard. They heard the word say, I'm going to drive the enemy out, but they didn't see the enemy running. And they allowed that, that gap in the middle between the promise and the fulfillment of the promise to frustrate them. And that's why the, the 10 spies rose up and said, we can't take this land. We're just like grasshoppers in their sight. There's no way we can do this. We're so tiny. They're so large. How can we have spiritual ministry? We're just young. We're just Bible school students. But God is saying, I do not want you to get frustrated when what you see appears different than what you've heard. God's saying, I'm ready to raise you up in power. And if you could get strong faith that says, I'm not going to waver. I am going to believe the promises of God. I'm going to believe the things of God. I am going to be victorious. That's why if you continue on into Exodus 23 and get down to around verse 30, he tells them, I'm going to drive the enemy out little and little, or in our modern day English, little by little, until ye be increased. Uh, there's the word increase again. Remember, we're praying, God, increase our faith. Give us that dimension of strong faith, uh, because spiritual ministry is going to require increased faith. It's going to require strong faith faith. That's what the Holy Ghost is trying to do in us. See how all of this is beginning to tie together right now? I have seen the new convert get frustrated in that middle season of increase, that little and little season, that little by little. I've seen new converts get frustrated. I've seen preachers get frustrated. I've seen preachers' wives get frustrated because it seems like at times that what we see is different than what we've heard, but we do not walk by what we see. We do not walk in what we see. We live. We move forward. We progress by faith. Now, I come today to tell somebody in the Holy Ghost right now, you are going to progress, but you've got to get your eyes off of what it looks like and get your eyes on Jesus. Because Hey, if Jesus tells Peter to get out of the boat, uh, Peter could say, but Lord, uh, it's stormy waters and nobody's ever walked on water before. Uh, what am I going to do? I'm going to go under. And, and, and the Lord says, I, I want you to come. Lord, if that's you, bid me to come. He did not look at the storm. He stepped on the water. Now, when he got his eyes off of Jesus, what happened? The Bible said he looked and saw the wind and the waves and how boisterous it was, and he began to sink. Because if you get to looking 
at what it looks like around you, then no longer are you walking in faith, by faith, but you are walking in the fear of what things look like. Uh, when you get ready to start a church, uh, there will be an attack of fear. When you get ready to pioneer, when you get ready to, to do a great thing for God, when you get ready to preach, when you get ready to sing, when you get ready to teach that Sunday school or, or, or do that mission work or become that evangelist, uh, there is always moments that things begin to spin and you feel like they're out of control and it looks so bad. Oh, we get close close to the end of the year and I can't tell you how many times that I've had students come in when I would be back in the office grading papers and and speaking of grading papers I should give you test oh I, I could hear the groaning that should have come up from all the way in the states from all the way in the Philippines oh the test oh the hard work the hard work. No, not yet. Not not yet. But we're going to do a project in, in October and uh, it will be a big part of our grade. But there are times that, that I would be in the office and students in the past would come to me and they would say, sir, sir, I, I need a sponsor. Things look so bad. And I would look at the sheet and see that they owed money and they would be praying and I would be praying and God would. But guess what? Every time that we would go to prayer, the Holy Ghost would move and, and someone would come up and the sponsor would step up and things would work out and it would be incredible because, listen, we do not live for God based on what we see. We live for God based on what God has spoken to us in his word and to us in prayer and if you ever want to be powerfully used in spiritual ministry, then you've got to get that in your spirit. Because when God calls you to do great things like step out of the boat, step out of the boat. And I'm talking about in the spirit. God tells you to step out into something you've never done before. There will always be an attack of the enemy and the flesh will always want to look and see, well, what does it look like? What does it look like? Because there will be times that what it appears, uh, what it looks like, will seem different than what we've heard. And if we're not careful, we will let what looks different than what we heard keep us from the promised land. That's why the children of Israel brought an evil report. They brought a negative report. They said, oh, we can't do it. We can't make it. And there's nothing we can do. And that generation died in the wilderness. Why? Because they got caught up and frustrated when things did not look like what they thought they should look when they had heard what they heard. Do not let your life get that way because as soon as you step out of the boat into spiritual ministry, there will always be a temptation from the enemy, from the devil to try to rob you of the blessing that God gives you. I have seen times that parents prayed for children that were not living for God and God would say, I'm going to save your children. And immediately later, they would come to me and go, oh, things are worse than it's ever been. Have you ever felt like that? You pray for something and before you have the great breakthrough and the miracles and the miraculous, it feels like things fall apart almost. That is the enemy trying to turn your head in the wrong direction because if he can get you to, to doubt, he'll get your heart to disconnect from the promise that God gave you. There's always a wilderness. There's always a Red Sea. There's always giants in the land. There's always Goliath. There's always a, an evil mad king. There's always something that will try to distract you from what God promised you. And so watch this. We, 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 don't, we don't put our eyes on what we see. We put our trust in the Lord. And so we now have looked over the life of Israel and we found out there were times that they heard this, but they thought they saw this and, and it was a conflict. Same thing happened to David. There came a day that, that Samuel called all the children of Jesse together and said, one of these is going to be king. And Jesse called all of them in and, and Samuel went, no, no, that's not the one. No, no, that's not the one either. No, no, that's not the one. That's not the one. That one's not the one either. Is there, is there not any more? Do you have any more sons? And finally, Jesse goes, oh, there is one more. There's one more. Um, uh, yes, his... His name's David, but David's not in the house. Where's, 
Where's David? Where's David? Oh, David's watching sheep on the uh, on the backside of the pasture, and he's just out there tending sheep. And Samuel says, "Go get him. I'm not. We're not even going to sit down until he is here. And and, and we got to get him. We got to get him to us right now. We've got to get him here. And they go and they bring David in. And when they bring David in, Samuel knows. That, oh, that's the one. The other brothers, that's not the one. But this one, that's the one. And he looks and he speaks a word into David. And he says, you're going to be the next king. God has anointed you to be king. And David hears the word of the Lord. You're anointed king. And David feels the oil from Samuel's horn of oil run down his head. And he hears the word, you're king. You're going to be king. You're anointed king. He hears the word and feels the anointing. Just like when God speaks to us in prayer, we hear the word and we feel the anointing of God's presence. Oh, that's powerful. I love it. I feel the anointing of his power right now. And I feel the strength of his power right now moving in us, through us, and in us right now. I hope you can feel that in the classroom. But guess what? Immediately after that he's told your king, immediately after he feels the anointing of the oil run down him to be king, he does not go and immediately sit on the throne. He ends up facing a giant. Wait, wait, wait. This doesn't look like what I heard. I heard I'm a king, but now I'm fighting a giant? I, I didn't hear the, the, this. And, and then not only does he fight a giant, but then, it, then even Saul rises up against him. And when he's called to the house of Saul, he walks in and a javelin is thrown at him. And it, the spear comes at him and he has to turn and it sticks into the wall. And David runs for his life and David has to be remembered because he's human. Oh, this is not, this is not what I heard. I heard your king. I felt the anointing. I heard I'm called by God, but what I see looks like it's in conflict to what I heard. And David runs. He's fought a giant. He's now dodged a javelin, and now he's running from Saul. And Saul is on one side of the mountain, and David is on the other side of the mountain. And when David is running, and he is going away, and now David has got a kingdom that's divided, and David has had to run to the Philistines. Oh, this does not look like what I heard. But David did not just run from Saul. David did not just run away. David did not just run to the Philistines, but David ran to God. David did not put his trust in what he sees because you will never move forward to the throne by simply putting your trust in what you see. Because sometimes what you see seems different than what you've heard. Trust what God said, not what you see happening in your life. Trust the word, not the confusion that it looks like going on in your life. Let me give you an example. If God told the sick, I will heal you. If God told someone that was very, very sick with a life-threatening disease, I will heal you. But then they still feel sick. They need to remember to trust the Word of God, not the outward thing they see and feel, but the Word of God. Because if God said it, God will perform it. Oh, we could talk about Joseph. Joseph had a dream of the stars and the sun and, 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 and all of the crops of the field that would bow down to him. And he'd come out of that dream going, oh, I'm going, to be a, I'm going to be a ruler and all of you will bow down to me. Now, that's probably not something you want to tell everybody, but he did. <laughs> and his brothers that already didn't like him hated him even more. But then all of a sudden, uh, the pit, wait. This don't look like what I heard. Then the slavery, then lied on at Potiphar's house, then thrown into prison and forgotten, then remembered and he, and he interprets the dream and a, then all of a sudden, boom, he's sitting on the throne. Oh, oh. See, he ran from Potiphar's house because he didn't want to sin against God. 
You can't let what you see distract you from what you heard. You can't let the storm that you see, feel, the wind, the waves that you feel distract you from the word of God that said, let us go over to the other side. Does that make sense? Because in spiritual ministry, we begin to progress in the Holy Ghost. And as we begin to progress in the Holy Ghost, the enemy tries to distract us from our purpose and from our calling. You can't let the sea, the storm in the Sea of Galilee distract you from the word that said, let us cross over to the other side. Because as soon as God said, let us cross over to the other side, there wasn't a storm big enough to stop them from crossing over to the other side. But they allowed what they saw to cause conflict from what they heard. And when you walk by sight, you will fail for fear. But we do not walk by sight. We progress and we move forward in faith, not by the outward appearance of the things we see. Lord God, right now I pray by the power and by the strength of the Holy Ghost that you would reach down and touch every student, every man, every woman right now by your power. God, let the Holy Ghost settle down in that room right now. Let spiritual ministry that's calling us to faith, but not just faith, but strong, increasing faith. God, let us begin to pray the prayer. Oh, God, search me, God. Strengthen me, Lord. I want you to increase my faith. Allow me, God, to step into strong faith that I not let the process of becoming what you've called me to be distract me from what you from becoming it because the enemy will do everything it can to distract us. We're not going to let that happen. We're going to rise up in prayer. We're going to rise up in faith. We're going to rise up in belief and power and strength and trust in the Holy Ghost. And when we do that, God will, in the fullness of time, bring to pass every word that he said. Amen. God bless each and every one of you. I love this class. I hope I'm making sense. I really do. There, there's so much to this. If you need notes or you need any of this, just uh, message me. I'll do my best to get my, my notes to you. They're pretty simple. Uh, and uh, But I'll do everything I can to help you. Uh, my wife and I love each and every one of you, and uh, I mean, we do. We believe in you. We believe in your power. We believe in your calling, and we know God's going to do incredible things in your life. Looking forward to our next session. Uh, God willing, uh, unless I feel led into a different direction, we're going to talk about the vital role of faith in our lives. And then we're going to talk about how to use the word of faith. Amen. Uh, God bless you. Have a wonderful day. Have a wonderful Friday or, or Monday. Today is Monday. Have a wonderful, I'm tired. Pray. I got to drive home tonight from when I'm making this uh, video and I uh, still need to preach one more time and uh, drive home. I should get home uh, around one or two in the morning. So pray. God bless you. I uh, appreciate you, and I look forward to seeing you guys next Monday. Remember, October's coming.